We good? Yep. All right, guys. Welcome to episode number six, possibly, of That's Normal's Boozy Book Club. <laughs> and tonight we are going to be discussing Cresley Cole's Poison Princess. Um, yeah, I think we we discussed a little bit. That was the main book that we got to, um, and throughout the episode we'll discuss like future plans for other books and stuff. It's going to be a good time. Um, do you want to go around and say what we're drinking tonight? Heck yeah, we do. <laughs> I am really boring. It's a we had like a crazy snowstorm here, so all I had was uh, freezer vodka, the vodka that's just <laughs> always in the freezer. Yep. And soda water and ice, <laughs> and that's it. It's getting real white girl wasted. <laughs> Uh, proud of you, proud Bobby. of you. And we have to point out, you have straight hair tonight, and you look yeah. really fabulous. Straight hair, white girl wasted with straight hair. It's like crazy Ooh. long too. I love it. You're just getting okay. long. I'll, I'll go next because I just I switch things up. I know you're expecting me to say I have a glass of Pinot Noir, yeah. but I do not. I actually am <laughs> sipping a little Sage from Art in the Age, um, and they didn't give me free. Alcohol to say that on the internet either. I actually paid for this bottle of alcohol. <laughs> um, my husband put in <laughs> some sort of lemon deliciousness with the sage, and yeah, it's good. I've been drinking a couple of them, and I've had a really terrible, long, snowy, trained mist day, and I don't think I'm going to make much sense tonight. So, yay! <laughs> <Put your book laughs> up. I'll go next. I have uh, a hot toddy in my little Goodwill mug. Uh, we have that mug at work. I'm not kidding. That really? is like the one mug I'll use at my office because the rest of them yeah. smell. I love this mug. I wish I had more of them. It's very like everyone mm -hmm. had it in the 70s. Okay, so it's not that much of a big deal. That <laughs> it looks my really office sturdy. Happened. Yeah, sturdy mug. Mm. It's like clay. All yeah. right. I'm having a ginger ale in a reusable cup. <laughs> As I do, um, because I have to get in the car in a little bit, because it's only 7 o'clock in Los Angeles. I know. You are never drinking um, at 7 o'clock. No, it's a little early, and because I usually do something after. But I want to remind everyone to tweet us using the hashtag TNBookClub, and maybe Ooh. if you're funny or something, we'll talk about you. <laughs> Bottoms up. Bottoms Everyone's up. goal tonight is to get talked about. <laughs> on our book club live chat. It is. It should be there. Oh, we have to give a real quick shout out to our friend Megan who said she's watching. I don't believe her. Hey, I'm Megan. Her shout out Hi, anyway. Megan. There were Hi, a Megan. lot of, of you new see my seniors. Seniors. What? There were a lot of new what? There were a lot of girls that said they were reading and joining us for the first time this month. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. Well, they Megan, better. Megan Arista, I think. Good. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah, That's you're right. That's awesome. I did see a bunch of new people. That's awesome. Oh, I also want to give a real quick shout-out to two of my friends who are in labor right now. <laughs> what? So. What? They're in a what? Shout out. They're in labor. They're pushing, well, not yet, but they will soon be pushing children from their women's areas. Two separate friends are having babies? Yeah, and they're both, like, in different stages of labor. Like, Aww. you know, one, yeah, I'm not going to get into the details, but real quick shout out, because babies are being born in the next couple of 24 hours. Oh, wow. yeah. This is magical. <laughs> this is magical Christmas miracle. Miracle of magical. Life. Do y'all want me to go into detail about my life? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. What I do want Christmas. you to go into detail about, though, is what's in a hot toddy? Um, whiskey yeah. and honey and what else is in this? That should be it. Lemon. Lemon. Tea, maybe? I don't Lemon know. I made it. Oh, I tweeted a picture. Um, was it this, this weekend? One. The other night, last Thursday, maybe. And I had some really good whiskey that we got, and I tweeted it, and I got. It was like probably one of our top posts ever on Facebook. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying because of, not because of me, because of Outlander fans. That is why we love you, Outlander fans, because you love whiskey. And a bunch of people kept saying. Have it in a hot toddy, and I do like a hot toddy. I feel like that is something that you start to drink as you age. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I drink it too. It. <laughs> when you're super old. Super old. No, you I want to try one. Strengthens the spine or something. <laughs> it like 
put you right to sleep, Elise. I mean, it's whiskey and like it's hot and it makes you feel right to sleep. It's amazing. Yeah, unintentional like, pinky out, by the way. <laughs> what? Totally unintentional <laughs> pinky out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> You know what won't put you to sleep? Ginger ale? It's ginger ale, guys. <laughs> ginger ale. Oh, and Man we have Toblerum. We also have, oh, Toblerum. Real quick shout out. We have to also give a real quick shout out to Jamie, who we were missing. She might be joining us. She had a work thing. And we're yeah. very sad. Yeah. It's not oh. an excuse, Jamie. I'm sorry. Sorry no that yeah. you want to pay your bills. But yep, sorry. Not an excuse. <laughs> Let's talk Poison Princess. Let's yeah. talk it. Talk about it. So this book uh, is by Cressley Cole. Hey, Cressley Cole. Hey. Okay. Cressley Cole on Twitter. Um, I had never heard of her before. <laughs> had anybody else heard of her before? Before you read this? I think I had heard of her from the Vaginal Fantasy Book Club. Uh, but not for this book. For nope. some adult stuff she'd written, right? Yes. Because she's okay. a she's a, a romance writer, and she's got like a paranormal series, Immortals mm. After Dark. It's got like 14 books in it, and what? it sounds like I need to read them. Yeah. All of them in quick succession. Yeah, you're right, because this is her first YA venture into the YA world, right. I believe. Right. Yeah, I hadn't heard of her at all, um, but two people in like a span of two weeks recommended it, and I thought that was strange. So I started reading it. Well, it was an excellent pick, I think. I do, too. I would say, as an overall, we'll talk about, obviously, our overall thoughts towards the end and give it thumbs up or thumbs down. It took me a little while to get into the book, and I'm thinking it's because of the world, because it's kind of different. It has the tarot card thing, which I didn't get, and I didn't really care about, so I wasn't really paying attention, and then I kind of had to go back and read things, especially yeah. when I got to the second book, which I did read, um, which we, we're not going to talk about today, but... I was like, oh, crap, that stuff was important that I skimmed over in the first book. Yeah. Um, but by the time, what is it, like two-thirds of the way through? I can't remember what it is specifically. I'm like, holy crap, this is a good book. Yeah. And I devour the end of it and then quickly read the second one. The second one's awesome from start to finish. Yeah. I don't know if that was everybody's experience or just mine. That was mine. In fact, that was most – it seemed like it was everybody's on Goodreads. But we can talk about that because, okay – Everyone seemed to have the same thought that the start versus the end was very disjointed. Um, Bernada on our Goodreads said that she thought it was very disjointed, and a bunch of people agreed with her. Um, Anne and Sandy both said that, like, they... Sandy actually said if she came to the thread and read that all of us liked the ending, and that was the only reason she kept going. Hmm. Oh, wow. Um, what do we think about that? That means me, then, because... What did you say, Nick? I, I was saying that I that is me because I didn't like can't. the beginning at all. Like it totally turned me off from the entire book. And you mean the so beginning, like, like the serial killer everyone, dude? Yeah, the serial mean? killer creepo. Yeah, that's what I mean. The serial killer creepy guy. It was like the weirdest, awfulest thing. I was. It was like reading real life, like not my real life, but someone else's. And I was like, I don't want to read that. But I don't know. Maybe it's good enough for me to finish. Clearly, it the theme for me is if it's a terrible, be terrible beginning, I'm not going to finish it. Yeah, and I think that's normally how I am. Although, I have a really hard time stopping books. Even if they're so terrible, and believe me, I've read real life Rob Henson fan fiction recently. So, that was published in a book. <laughs> wow, and I actually finished that freely now. Yeah, I'm over. I'm sorry. I have a couple <laughs> drinks in. <laughs> Um, and I couldn't stop. It was so bad. I just kept reading it. <laughs> and you were thinking about Rob the whole time. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wait. I wait, actually... Wait, sorry. Go ahead. I just have to... Re I'm going to forget, so I'm going to say it right now. I was on Cressley's website because I, I read this book like a month and a half ago, so I was trying to remember anything about it. And on the front page of the arcanachronicles.com, down at the bottom... There is a picture of People Magazine with Rob Pattinson and Kristen Stewart on the front, which apparently also has an, an ad for Poison Princess in it. So for full circle, people. Full, full circle. circle. Full Just circle. had to bring that up. Full circle. <laughs> Twilight. Poison Princess. I love it when it comes back around. I know. 
Hugs. Group hug. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say, Nikki, the comment you made about not liking the beginning because it almost felt like reading real life or something, I think that was, that's, yeah, I would have never described it that way, but that's like exactly why that serial killer guy was so creepy to me, is that it was like way too, I mean, this is probably a credit to her writing, I guess, but it was like way too realistic in his head, and it was just some of the torture described, it was just like really, really disturbing, like worst Criminal Minds episodes you've ever seen. <laughs> That's yeah, exactly that, what I thought. That. It was, that was good for me. I mean, me too. it was one Ooh. of the reasons I wanted to know what was going to happen to this girl and how she was going to end up in his home. Yeah. Otherwise, if it hadn't, if the story hadn't had that framework, I wouldn't, I may not have been as interested as I was. Yeah. No, I agree. I totally agree. I feel like it that was, is a credit to Kresley's writing. Yeah. Um, because it was, it felt really real. So I guess... Obviously, that just creeped you out too much, Nick, but I don't know. That was, like, a positive thing for me for some reason. I thought it was interesting it was moving weird. on from that, like, right after that beginning part when they start describing um, Evie's life at, in high school and everything. I just thought it was so interesting that, like, so many of these books um, tend to take a really similar turn and that they're, like, name dropping all kinds of like designer clothes and like talking about how like perky and blonde people are. <laughs> are we and, talking about a specific book that we seem to reference every book? Club? No, we're not going to reference it. Every we are. Time. It's one of my questions. 12 minutes in, guys, and <laughs> and we may have had our first mention of the fever series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. She's I like hate when books cat. do that and authors. Huh? What? Hmm? They're talking over each other. Go ahead, Nikki. Go. Oh, I was just saying I hate when authors name drop, like use modern, like brands and designers. It just it feels like it pulls me out. But then yeah. I think it's also probably a device she's using. Of like this is like modern day and she's a real person, but then after all of this happens, it's such a stark contrast between you know coach purses and right you know the serial killer in the basement. On the opposite end of that, you have Stephanie Meyer, who Bella and Edward are listening to a very popular band that her stepdad had given her whatever, and you're like, what are they listening to Nickelback? They have no idea what she had no idea what to put in there. <laughs> Like some random non. I feel like that was a Lincoln Park shout out. A state Lincoln Park. I always thought it was too, and I feel like we probably talked about this, and that's why. <laughs> probably a blog post somewhere. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure that there is. Um, but I think oh, I I have a feeling sometimes that that might be like a, an editor being like, hey, this book may not be popular. Or it might be popular again in ten years. So you got to be vague. You can't say that they're listening to mm -hmm. Radiohead when in 10 years Radiohead's going to totally date you. Um, and actually, I'm reading a book right now that was written in 1988, mm -hmm. and um, you wouldn't know it. Like, occasionally she'll describe some clothing that is a little, like, pink and sparkly for today, but overall, I'm like, wow, this feels very, pre like, feels very current. Um, but, I mean, yeah. every book is, like, I mean, for the most part, your books are, a, a, you know, they're a sliver of time wherever you are or whatever. And right. the characters and their situations and their humanity is what makes them timeless. And so you have to kind of look at it like that. So, I mean, if they're listening to iPods or they're listening to Waltmans or they're sitting around a wireless in a 1940s, like, parlor or whatever, um, the human aspect is what makes it, like not dated, so that's what you have to deal with. So it doesn't bother me, but the fact that she's like a little baby Mac from the Fever series <laughs> pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very distinct parallel. Yeah. It was pretty great. <laughs> um, Beth, real quick side I wanna, note. I wanna... Go ahead, Nikki. I'll tell my side note no, later. No, I was just going to give a shout out. But... Tell give your shout later. Out. Tell your side note, and then I'll because we're totally off topic, but that shouldn't be a surprise. I just finished my drink. Beth, your your hair stripe matches your your shirt. I'm wondering if that's intentional. It is not intentional. 
I enjoy it. It looks great. <laughs> it's really not. They really don't match. This is like Kelly Green, and this is Turkey <laughs> Needle. Okay, well, uh, it looks like it matches on my screen. Okay, Nikki, sorry, go ahead. You, you want to do a real quick shout out? All right, somebody. I just want to do a real quick shout out to some people who are tweeting us. Kenny Argo, and we have a Jillian Wilcox who agrees with Beth and loved the beginning. Yeah. Hi, keep tweeting us. Hey, Penny. Hi. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Oh, and it turns out our friend Megan is watching because she is texting. So, sorry that I called you a liar, and Megan. <laughs> and screen capping. So, look your prettiest. So, okay, we talked about the start versus the end. Uh, one of the other big issues with the book, or one of the first, like the first things that people were, were talking about, was whether or not um, they thought Jackson was hot, slash whether or not his Cajun accent was hot, <laughs> and uh, discuss Jackson vis-a-vis uh, -vis his hotness, vis-a-vis -vis his sociopathic alcoholic tendencies, <laughs> and go. And go. Okay, I have to. I'll be honest. I think he's very, very hot. But every time he opened his mouth to speak, I thought he was really dumb. And I had a hard time with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> his English just sounded like he was just a dumb hick yeah. from the bayous. And I, I guess I've never seen anything. Like, I can't picture that accent. I don't, or I can't hear it in my head. I don't know I, if I just haven't watched enough. I can hear it. It sounds like I Adam can hear it. It sounds like who, Beth? <laughs> Sounds like Adam Sandler, right? From The Water Boy or whatever. <laughs> Is that what his accent was? No. When he lived in the More like sling, sling boy. Oh. No. What was that noise? I don't know. I have no idea. That could have been. Maybe it's like people that. using accents. It's really hard to read them. Like think about Outlander. Think about this. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. But, like, all of like <laughs> all of Faulkner, all of like Tori Morrison's books, all, Zora Neale Hurston, like anything written a bit in the South has got like a like the dialect is written out, and it's hard yeah. to read. Yeah, I wonder how actually. I I think our friend Elena re uh, listened to this book, and I thought I was like when she told me she was listening to it. She has long car rides every day. I was like, ah, you might hate it because of that. But I think that whoever's doing the voice, she said, did a really good job, and it actually, she thought he was hot, and, he, and, it, and the accent did not bother her at all. So yeah. maybe reading it was a lot harder than. Yeah, I think having it spelled out for me every time, and then having thing having like the. French Cajun words and then like their English definition every time bugs me a lot where I, and like almost made me feel like what you don't think that I have an imagination like if you had told me that in the beginning when you were describing him I probably could have like tried to carry that through myself um, but having that every time was like okay I this is like a little much yeah, yeah. also I like the hot dumb ones so <laughs> <laughs> I know. Me too. Me too. Exactly what I. Oh am. my word. <laughs> oh. oh, the things we could say there. Um, we did get a comment that reader that said the accent is very hot. So it was blasphemy that we would say it's not. I'm not saying the accent isn't hot. I just think he sounded dumb when it was written out. And he yeah. was just like, I can't give, I wish I had an example, but there are his examples of him being like, me thinks that you are. <laughs> he says stuff like, me want to taste a you, that girl you, or something. Yes! Oh. Putting you at the end, like, yeah, uh, no, I don't want no. you to have a taste of me. Thank you, hot man. I, I mean, it's, it can be cool. Like, I didn't really get, like, Jamie Fraser's stuff, and then as I read more of it, it became hot to me versus being weird and something I had to get used to. And I would say that Jack's, Jack in um, the second book is probably, it's not as bad as it is in the first. Yeah. Can I think she's not there's... establishing that either. She's not establishing the fact that uh, the heroine, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> Evie. 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 <laughs> I can hear the French Cajun or whatever. Um, so she's not going through that anymore. Right. So. 
whatever. Elise? I was just going to say, I know you can't tell me this, but, like, do they finally have sex in the second book? I can tell you this, and yes, they do. Okay, that will make me read it, then. <laughs> it's a really good... <laughs> yeah, this, this book makes my good YA book sex. Yeah, best. and not just... It's, it's good. It's got good sex in it. Yeah. I don't feel like just their one sex scene is good. Like, okay. it's a hot book. Like, take the pool scene from late, from this book Yeah. and, like, turn it up a notch, a couple of notches, in a couple Which, of places. So I never thought that I would be on this side of this argument, but it was probably just because I wanted to have them have sex so bad, but, like, when she said more, I totally meant that to mean, like, all the way more. Yeah. And I was actually, like, I, again, never thought that I would be like, what's wrong with you, woman? But when she was, like, not understanding what was happening and, like, having no idea what he was doing and then, like, all of a sudden there was a condom, I was like, what? No. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I think her virginity is, is not, I don't think that, like, they're saying anything. I'm glad that she took the moment to say no, and that it's in a YA book that this girl can, you know, choose That's for herself true. whether or not she wants to give her virginity to her preppy boyfriend, or have sex with a hot Cajun, and then she gets to decide when it stops, and it's up to her, even though she's confused about it. Like, yeah, I, I forgot this was very, YA. I very <laughs> for somebody her age to be confused and be, like, turned on and want to do something and not know how to deal with it, but I'm glad she stopped it and didn't just go along with it just because that's what he wanted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're the best mother, Beth. <laughs> that's like nothing to do with me being a mother. Just be like, <laughs> like having bad, like made bad choices. But thank you for saying that. I would, yeah, I forget how old she's supposed to be. She's 17, 18? Oh, okay. No, she's not. She's 16. Mmm. Yeah, because she's, like, two years younger than them. Yeah. But, I mean, I, her virginity was kind of a big deal. Um, I mean, people were talking about it a lot. She was talking about it a lot. Jack was talking about it a lot. In the second book, it gets talked about a lot by other characters. Guys, I got kicked off. I know. Ooh. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's... I'll show you later. I'll show everyone later, maybe. But you're you're on here twice, and the first one is frozen, <laughs> frozen. <laughs> in like the derpiest phase. Of <laughs> oh no! I have, no photo. I have no idea what happened. I said I don't even think you heard me say it. I said Beth, you're the best mom, and then I got kicked off. I you were like you were having the sex yeah, talk with us. Know. You were having the sex talk with us, your teenage daughters, and I was just so happy about it. I cannot believe you just compared yourself to my daughter. No, oh my god! <laughs> I'm not. That's not at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like not that much older than me. Actually, yeah. I have no idea how old you are, but I think maybe at max your three years older than me. <laughs> and um, no, no, no. I just meant it. the way you said it was very much somebody who is anticipating the fact that you are going to have teenage daughters in the not very distant future. And I enjoyed it. Okay. It made me happy. All true. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, like Elise said, oh yeah, I forgot it was YA, and that's of course what we do because we do not have daughters. We're just thinking about what ourselves and our need for Jack and Eve to get it on. Like, how fast can this be a sex book? Um, <laughs> exactly. A nice comment from our friend <laughs> Megan is, if you ever have a choice of losing your virginity to a preppy boy and a hot Cajun, you always choose the hot Cajun. <laughs> what is the hot Cajun have? That is echoed. What did you say? What the hot Cajun. Oh. I was going to say our, uh, our tweets, Penny joined in again and said that Cajun is hot, but Swamp People Cajun is not. So... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a difference. I don't know. I'm not from there. Lip smackers? <laughs> is that okay. a sparkly lip smackers? A lip? No, it's not no. sparkles. What is sparkles. This? I don't know. Barry um, Bellini. I don't know. Everybody go, um, tell her, anybody that's watching, go to the 
the blog, we have a couple of polls up. Oh, yes. Let's and, discuss. Uh, we have a, a nice little um, a poll about what's the, particular, what's the worst part of this particular apocalypse. There are zombie things, the bag men or whatever. There's the whole, like, lack of green, lack of food, lack of water. There's cannibals, rapists. Wait, who are the rapists? Mm. The militia. The militia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The militia rapists, okay. And then there's the whole, like, Arcana War or whatever. Hmm. So, That's a good question and a really hard one. Yeah. It's oh. always the humans that are the worst. I know, and 100% of people say the rapists are the worst. <laughs> I'm looking I... at the results. You just <laughs> it. Did you guys see 28 Days Later? Yes. That's not the movie about the guy who ch chops off his arm, is it? No, no, that's like no, 28 that's hours. 27 hours. 127 hours. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, right? so when she's going to end so that true. comment there, can't get any better than that. <laughs> so I don't think I was going to say it was going to be better than that. So. <laughs> James Franco does a chop off his oh, arm no. in that movie? No. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Do you guys ever like make notes when you're reading through a book and then look at them all later without context? No. Yes. <laughs> but that sounds like a really fun experiment. I just went I just went to my notes and the first one is like again with the cutting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who is cutting? She is. She's got Good. those claws. Oh the claws, yeah yeah yeah. For yeah. for gardening. The gardening claws. That's Ooh. right. Um That's it's not her fault. It isn't her fault. And she gets even creepier. Gets just wait till book two. Yeah. yeah. Or wait till the end of book one. Like yeah. You haven't finished it. So, so like, what do we think about the this world and the apocalypse? Do we yes. think it's uh, over the top? Is it implausible? Do you not care? I didn't really understand how the bagmen came about. Yeah, and what are they? They're just they're not human. They are they're like zombies, but they just need water. Yeah, I just wasn't I really it. sure why that was. It it seems like a little extra. Uh, like I I wasn't sure that it was totally necessary. It seemed like it would probably be um, scary enough to have just like the apocalypse and the Arcana War happening. Yeah. But I agree. It seems I think they're like a vi like a viral zombie. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, they're I've never whether or not a zombie like needed water. This is not something that impresses me. But I mean, I guess it's just an extra danger. Yeah. Um, yeah. But whatever, I could do without them. The rest of it, I like. I don't. I mean, I don't think it's entirely plausible. But I'm not into like reading for plausibility. No, yet. not at all. Um, is that <laughs> what this is considered? Post-apocalyptic. A post. I can't say it. I can't do it. Too many post stages. Post-apocalyptic. Yeah, that's yeah. what this genre would be. Yeah, I mean, it's got like a, I guess it's got like a fantasy element too with the tarot cards, but it's, yeah. it's post-apocalyptic basically. Have I think what. You, go ahead, Elise. Have any of you um like had tarot cards read? No. So I like this. That's why I think it was weird for me. Like I know nothing about this. I didn't know that that was even a thing, except they're just cards that you see sometimes at Urban Outfitters, and. <laughs> <laughs> Elise, <laughs> the judging. Elise is dead. Sorry. <laughs> I hate that place. Oh, oh I thought it was because of my un non knowledge of tarot cards. You were so no. ashamed. <laughs> As urban outfitters. No, it's okay. not urban. So no, I, I don't know anything oh, about that. Please enlighten me. I, I don't know a whole lot about what they mean, but I know that um, I know that there are like a lot of them, and it seems to be like whatever gets drawn when you're sitting with a psychic or whatever is supposed to like mean something about I don't know your future. Well, I think too what's interesting about it for me is yes, there's a lot of them, but I guess she's focusing on like the major arcana, which is like twenty or so cards, and the thing about it, what I, because I've been Googling it, trying to figure out, like, at least a little bit about what it's about and what the characters are and stuff, and 
it depends on what's played with what. Mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. What its power is. Like the tower card usually always means destruction, but when it's played with something else, it can mean something totally differently. And if they're played inverted, like I guess if they're played upside down, it changes completely what they are. Mm. So that's why I guess sometimes mm. she's the Empress and sometimes she's whatever else. The Red Witch, yeah. So I guess it gives, I mean, what the, the, thing is, the series, like a ton of opportunity to, for good characters to become bad and bad characters to become good and people to change what they do because mm -hmm. it's all kind of up in the air and it's all relative. Do you guys think, um, did you get the impression, and maybe this is something that I totally missed, that, uh, like, so Evie is the Empress and or the Red Witch, is her, gra I mean, I know her grandma is like that other thing, but is this something where it's like, uh, they, the Empress dies and then like her daughter or something is the Empress, or it's like passed down through the family? I. The only thing with that that like seemed like it might be that is with the alchemist, cr like crazy serial killer guy. He kept mentioning his father doing um, this thing. I don't know. I know more because of book two. We know more because oh. we read book two. I think some of that becomes clear, although the parents' question I don't know that we know the answer to yet. Okay. I didn't say that very well. It, it's really like it doesn't seem like she is the only one that's ever existed. Yeah. No. Um, like that's a huge part of the rest of the series and what makes it really interesting. Oh, what okay. you say, Beth? I mean, I would say it's more, it's not necessarily bloodline, it's more like reincarnation. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what you learn in the second book. Right. Um, but she has no idea that that's her past or whatever. Yeah, yeah, there's no, like, knowledge of that. Interesting. And there, I think, is there just three books? Do we know? I don't know. I mean, her other series has got 11 books, and this one could certainly go on for a while. I don't think the second book necessarily wrapped anything up. So I so. think it might be, I don't know why I was thinking it was a trilogy, but maybe that was just me, like, in my little YA world. Um, I could yeah, I see it easily going on for more than three books. Yeah, you're right. I, there, I think I just thought that, because that's, I like to think that maybe the book's going to wrap up and I'll be, you know maybe just 31, not 37 when it's over. I've had so much to drink that I'm hugging this much. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for... Okay, first of all, I would like to point out that, um, Beth, I you did a really great job with the polls on the blog, although <laughs> you did a poll for F, F. Mary Kill, but you didn't really... I mean, just a poll. <laughs> There's no way to play. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Ignore it. So, it could just be a general, like, what are your feelings on the activities? <laughs> what? It could be a general, <laughs> like, what are your feelings on the activities? Yeah, you just get one choice. You're not going to tell us whether you're F marrying you're or like killing them. them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so funny like that. that. <laughs> it's okay. I think I did that last month. So anyway, uh, let's do let's play F Mary Kill with Jackson, Brandon, who is the peppy boyfriend, and Matthew, who's the guy she hears in her head. Okay. I'll just say this before we get started: this is not who I wanted to do the F Mary Kill with. The <laughs> oh character yeah, that's introduced in the second book would make for a far better F Mary Kill. Far book. better, yeah. So let's just put it out there: we're going to F the guy that gets introduced in the second book. Oh time. whoa! Oh yeah, at least you're going to love it. You're going to wow. devour that book. Yeah, um, it's love triangle to the max in the second book. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like, yeah. I would, I think, I think, I would f Jackson, marry Brandon, and kill Matthew. Yeah, I'm agree. Because I can barely remember who Matthew is. I, he's just annoying. He's so annoying. Remember him in the he second book. Shut up. Yeah, he won't shut up. I don't remember what he's like in the first book, but he's so annoying in the second. Yeah. <laughs> Elise? There are, two, well, there are two, like, Matthew, Matt characters. Right? I was just one kid. What? Wait, so I don't... I didn't really quite understand, like, Matthew, the boy, and, like, how old he was. You won't learn... You're gonna... Don't give it away. It's the second book stuff. Oh. I don't remember the difference. But he's, is he even, like, effable? I thought he was, like, a child. No. He's enough. He's not a child, yeah. 
Okay. It's old enough for Evie. Oh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I would F Brandon, marry Jackson for like long term effing. Yeah, but no, no, no. We we said this. We said before that you just get missionary style if you marry them. No. Yes, we we said this. You must not have been here no. that week. I said you don't get any that. with the marriage. You don't get any? Wait, How come you what? Not get any? We've had this fight before. I think <laughs> that you're, you, the point to the exercise, the very erudite exercise that is FA, <laughs> is that you have to sacrifice something to say you're going to marry the whoever. What's the, what's no. the benefits of marriage then? There no, are this the is security a, no. and no, this is a, long like, term. This is a one time thing versus. A, lo a long time thing. A lifetime thing. I say it's a sexual thing versus a companion thing. Well, I don't want Brandon as a companion. <laughs> That's true. It sounds like <laughs> annoying <laughs> as hell. He's probably rich and he'd have a nice house. But he's so... I don't know, maybe... Well, if those are the rules, I'm. I choose to... Mary Vodka, <laughs> F. Jackson, and Kill Matthew. Okay. <laughs> Jillian Wilcox agrees on Twitter. F. Jackson, Mary Brandon, Kill Matthew. Thank you. Um, oh, here's actually a good one. Going back to... Um, Carrot June asked if we got a Daryl from Walking Dead vibe from Jackson. Hot Definitely. guy shooting zombies at the crossbow. <laughs> Phew, fan self, she said. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, just a little younger, Daryl. I can see that. Actually, there's a really good picture. It's the guy who plays him, I think, in the book trailer. Um, bye, Nikki. Oh. She just said <laughs> bye. Did she even say goodbye? Nikki had to go. <laughs> and we ignored her warning. <laughs> and I'm really sorry about that. Sorry, Nikki. Goodbye, Nikki. Oh, yeah, there are like eight of them. <laughs> Terrible friends. Oops. Good stuff. Bye. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay. Sorry, Nikki. See ya. Um, what were we just saying? We're talking um, about Jackson being like Daryl Daryl Dixon. Yeah. Oh no. There's a guy. There's a guy that um, that comes up when you like Google Jackson. I think it's the guy from the book trailer. He's hot, and he would totally. He's like who I picture now. Let me let me try to find it, guys. Okay. Jackson. But keep talking. Oh, here, here are some other names that our friend Megan said we should be using instead of Matthew. The Hippie. Finn. He's way hotter. Who is that? Who is she talking about? Oh, the hippie. Uh, Finn is another card. He's the magician. What? I don't even remember that. I don't remember either. <laughs> yeah, he shows up in the big battle with the militia. What? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He oh, wants yeah. to go with Selena. Right. He wants Selena. But Selena only wants Jackson. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's rich. He's rich, right? Okay. He's so. the one that can he can create illusions. He creates. Yeah. Illusions he makes the militia oh. kill each other. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, I'll just say this as a side note: all dudes named Finn, in any capacity, are always awesome. Fins in books, in on TV shows, in movies, fins are always awesome. So, Aww. all right, Finn, we love you. All right, I found the link, and I'm putting the link in the chat, and I'm gonna tweet it. Here's the guy who I think is—he's the guy on the book cover, and I think he's very attractive, and like, he's like the perfect Jackson to me. He's got a very he's, square jaw. I think so. I don't know. I okay. found a small picture. Yeah. I'm just realizing that I, like, totally, totally didn't want to believe this was a YA. <laughs> <laughs> this is really ruining all, this is ruining the pool scene. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't because the um, the second book, like, it's That's, good. Yeah, okay. and like, don't get hung up on the fact that it's YA. I mean, it's just it's just a category for her to be able to, because the protagonist is young. Right. And it's written by someone who's a very, like, she's an award-winning romance author, so I'm assuming that her romance novels are very steamy and very well-written. And yes. I'm probably going to read at least the um, 
the Immortals After Dark series because it's gotten so many awards. And hey, it's still steamy. I mean, it's, it's steamy. Still pretty hot. Uh, no, that's not what I'm. I'm not complaining about that at all. Mm -hmm. I, I was just realizing that I was definitely pick, uh, picturing barons and that, <laughs> <laughs> and not a 18 year old boy. Yeah, and not like Jacob. <laughs> oh, God. Which is kind of what he is because he's on a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to picture Jacob either. But yeah. that's not who I think this picture is that I send you a picture of. I think he has more muscles. I mean, yeah, I guess he looks kind of young there. Maybe that's not a good example of the picture of that. That's okay. If you're I'm if, if you're watching this and you're not on Twitter, I did just tweet the picture that I was thinking. But it's the guy from the the first book cover, the book, book cover for Poison Princess. Princess. He looks pretty hot. And I think he might be in the book trailer for Endless Night. Uh, ooh. I think. That's which a is book the trailer book. I need to watch. Oh, yeah. That book. Yeah, it's um, it's not bad. Yeah. Book trailers are weird. They're weird things, but they're some of them are good. So my last like question that I have planned is about Edie, specifically. Because I think a lot of people didn't like her, didn't find her likable, didn't like the Mac, baby Mac <laughs> aspects of her personality, like the Southern Princess kind of thing. So my question is more like, do characters have to be likable? Like you have Mac and Scarlett hmm. O'Hara versus Claire from Outlander and Katniss from The Hunger Games who are totally likable. Like hmm. what? Does it affect your enjoyment of a book if the lead character, the protagonist, especially if it's a woman, is rather unlikable. So that's funny to me because I think what makes a character unlikable to me might be a little different because I didn't I didn't find Evie unlikable. Right. I actually thought she had a lot more spine than like a lot of the female YA or just like supernatural romance characters that are out there. Yeah. Um, like for example when she was when she decided to up and leave uh, Selena's place to go like find uh, Matthew. Yeah. Um, I, it's like she actually left and wasn't. I mean, she was. Yeah, of course. Like wondering if you if Jackson was going to come after her, but like she left and was planning on doing that on her own. Um, so yeah, I didn't. I didn't really find her that unlikable. I thought obviously some of the stuff when she was a cheerleader was like a little bit annoying, but I feel like I got to. I feel like she had more of a personality yeah. than a lot of the other uh, female heroines that like bother me. Yeah, I think I didn't. She didn't bother me. Um, I can easily name you ten female heroines that do, but I don't think that that really detracts from my enjoyment of a book because I think as long as the guy is likable. I mean, if the girl is not likable and the guy is not likable, then why am I reading a book? But I think that a great male character can carry a book even when I'm not crazy about the female. Yeah, I mean, she's she's not unlikable to me either. Um, I think that she has issues. Like, I keep, I just started watching Jemay Private School Girl on HBO. Is anybody else watching no. that? No. What is this? Oh, my God. It's Chris Lilly. He's um, dressed up as a high school girl. And oh, my like, God. I guess. And it's a private school girl, and he's horrible. This character's horrible. Do you remember? Like, I, I sent some, I did a couple of, what was it? Oh, when Jamie Fraser had, I'm so drunk. When, um, Jamie <laughs> Fraser, <laughs> when he had the, when we had the Jamie Fraser cutout post, and uh -huh. uh, it was just gifts, and one of the gifts was someone saying, Stop pushing me, fat sluts. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. That's from that? That's Jamee, private school girl. Okay. And it's on HBO? Wow. It's on HBO. And uh, Ryan and I are watching it. We're loving it. It's so funny. And so it's, okay. it's so ridiculous. It's He's this high school girl, and he's so horrible, and his attitude's horrible. He's really mean to his mother and his sister and stuff. Her sister. He's playing a girl. And um, I hate it, but I think all teen teenagers to some degree have that, like, level of unlikability. Yeah. Because yeah. they're poor. And so if you think people like give YA heroines like a bad rap for being unlikable and really they're just teenagers and they're And they're just figuring themselves out. I think that's what it is a lot of times. They're like so up and down, their emotions are all over the place, they can't decide. 
I think right. that's what makes them not likable, but that's what makes them teenagers. I think also yeah. we tend to we we tend to read like reviews and commentary from other adult women reading YA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which can also kind of affect that perspective too because it's totally. hard to remember what we were actually thinking at that time. Right. And the second you jump on Tumblr and you look up like shatter me things like I did yesterday and today for posts that I wrote about that series. You're reminded of like how different you are than the target market for that yeah. book. Or right. um, yeah, that they are people who like are obsessed with this female character. That's their hero. Yeah. And yeah, that makes it very clear. Yeah. It's not for us. I mean but it is. Still for us. <laughs> it's for all. It's for all that's, people. <laughs> for that's all what people. That's Star Wars all about. It is. For all the um, What do we? Any last thoughts on Poison Princess? Do we want to talk about future plans? Oh yeah, talk about future plans. Um, one of my future plans is definitely to read more Cressley Cole. Yes. Um, I'm going to do Christmas shopping this weekend. I don't know that's what you're talking about, but that is definitely in my future plans. <laughs> Are you going to buy anybody a Cressley Cole book? Maybe, maybe by Secret Santa, we'll get a Chrisley Cole book. Or maybe they won't. <laughs> we have Secret Santas here at That's Normal. Um, we do. Anyway. Um, <laughs> you guys. Oh my gosh. This is just going downhill. I need more sage. What um, are we reading next? Yeah, well that is what you meant by that. Um, Beth, you actually had an idea. I don't know. And I think we're going to kind of keep it up to you guys. We have a couple suggestions, and then we want, since we have all these people, like 200 of you now reading in book club, we want you to yeah. tell us what you want to read, right? So we we're have gonna, some suggestions. We're not telling you this month. We're going to let you pick, and then, like, either tonight or tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm, like, naked. Yeah. <laughs> tonight we'll have um, a little poll up on Goodreads, and you can pick, and you'll pick what our next, what our January book is going to be. So I think one of our options will be, what book did I say? Oh, <laughs> um, Cuckoo's Calling by J.K. Rowling. Everybody know what that is? It's Robert Galbraith, Cuckoo's Calling. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Oh, I didn't realize that was one of them. It's, yeah. Did I you read it already? Did I say that? I don't think that's what your email said, but whatever. Oh, no, that was for my real life book. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. I, I want to read that. that we can, can read it. Poll. That could be on the poll. Jamie's <laughs> reading it now. That's why I was getting confused. Jamie's already reading it. Um, I know what it was. It was The Handmaid's Tale because we were talking about, at one point we were talking about how much we didn't like dystopia really anymore, and like yes. The Handmaid's Tale is like the original dystopia. Yes, that's right. You said and that. so that might be one of our choices. And now I have to put Cuckoo's Calling on the choices because I said it. Also, <laughs> another suggestion is a book called Not a Drop to Drink, which does not sound like something I would like because I like drops to drink. <laughs> Obviously, I do too. Obviously. Well, um, we'll find out what that book is. Uh-oh. Hello? Becca? Oh, no. Becca? <laughs> Okay, I think uh -oh. we'll find out what that book is about, and yeah, I'm excited about um, having having a poll and choosing that way, because that always works out. Oh, hey. Are you back? You're muted. Yeah, I know. I hate Comcast. Sorry. Comcast, you suck. Yes, they <laughs> do suck. You do. They do. I'm, like, down the street from the headquarters, and I can't even get the internet in my house. All right. Um... Anyway, we'll find out more about what that book is about because it comes highly recommended. Yes. Cool. And, and if you have a suggestion and you tweet us tonight and I like it and we like it, we'll put it on the, we'll put it on the poll. You have to tweet us with the hashtag TN Book Club tonight and then it'll be on the poll tomorrow morning as one of our options for people to choose for our – but the poll, poll will have, like, a closing date. We're not just going to, like, let it roll out. Right, forever. <laughs> This is not some just like willy nilly. <laughs> like, what do you think? Do you think this is a joke? <laughs> <laughs> or a demo? What is that? Is that Cajun? Is that your Cajun? <laughs> this is Paul isn't about you, 
you. You, you, you. It's not a, what do you think? <laughs> I can't. I can't even try. I'm not going to try it. It's going to be embarrassing. No, we can't. Um, we did have, oh. <laughs> Wait. I just lost my train of thought. Oh, my God. We will pick another book. But we did have another suggest. We had another suggestion for future plans on Twitter um, that we need a That's Normal get-together for the for the Outlander Stars event oh, wow. that is happening in January, which we haven't said, but there will be three That's Normal people in attendance there. Yeah. Beth, I'll be there. Myself and Nikki are going to be in Los Angeles, the city of angels, on January the 11th, 11th which is also a very special That's Normal birthday. <gasps> Miss Beth. Thorn will be turning some age. That's awesome. And and it's Diana Gabaldon's birthday. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's her birthday too. Her birthday is my birthday. Oh my gosh! And I'm gonna see her on our collective birthday. This is gonna be amazing. What we're a gonna wonderful have... day this is gonna be. Yeah, but we will definitely be there. So we know we um. Can't wait to meet, because there's going to be so many people there that we've, like, been interacting with online, and we can't wait. Yes, all of you that are going to be there. It's going to be all great. The, yeah, we're going to, like, we're going. I can't wait for the petting zoo outside. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm the last jokes. one. I'm the last jokes. one. Jokes. You're right. Last Even Nikki out. has finished Outlander, and you have not, Elise. Elise, I'm telling you, I think you'd like it. The only ginger I will even think about is Prince Harry with a beard. Oh, uh, I saw that today. What? He has a beard? Yeah. He's, a... he's going to be in Memphis, you guys. He's coming to my town <laughs> for a wedding. Somehow one of his buddies is marrying some chick from Memphis. I'm like, what? Where? What? And he's going to be here. <laughs> um, Elise just tweeted a fabulous thing. I'm going to retweet it right now. Hey, um, another thing I was going to say, if you have any book suggestions for Regency Romance that is exactly like Sarah McLean's books, I'm all up for it because I've learned something about my recent obsession with Regency Romance. I don't actually like Regency Romance. I like Sarah McLean, the author. Absolutely. And so everything I've read since then has been a disappointment. Hmm. And I would like to, and I feel like I'm reading romance that you buy at the shopping, mm, the grocery store. At Kroger. While you're standing on, at Kroger. Yep, at the Ghetto of Kroger in Nashville. Yeah. Which is where I used to shop in college. Um, the Kroger's that, in Memphis aren't ghetto. Oh, well, we don't have Kroger in the Northeast. Okay. But we have Giant. So if I was a Giant and I was picking up a romance, that's what I feel like Regency Romance is, except for Sarah McLean. So I would like your suggestions for non Ghetto Kroger Regency Romance, please. Something that doesn't have weird euphemisms for penis. Right. That's what Just say it. Point Just is. call it a penis. We don't need the euphemism. I don't need to hear man root. In <laughs> no. I want it to say something that is normal. That That's a crime. Oh. Can we please talk about how right now I'm reading a book? I don't remember what it's called. Oh, it's called A Knight in Shining Armor by somebody, and it was written in 1988, and I think it was the original Outlander. It's like time travel, and she's a, she brings Band-Aids and Neosporin and stuff, and oh, I bet... <laughs> Michael and Claire has penicillin stuck in her dress? Yeah. She, like, brings aspirin and clear... It's, like, in the 1500s, though. Anyway, it's not that good, but I'm reading it anyway. Jamie Whitebread said we should read The Handmaid's Tale. It's the most amazing book. All right. I, so, I feel bad that I haven't read it before. Like, I was a literature major. How did I miss it? Wait, is that the one that... Oh, this is the original dystopian. Yeah. Oh, wait, Carrot June. She, she made a joke. Because she's the one who said that our future plans need to be an Outlander hangout in L.A. And then she said, you think this is a joke, you? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Cajun joke to end the night. Proud of you. I'm bad with the Cajun. I'm worse with the Cajun than I am with the Scottish speak. I, I've got <laughs> Scottish speak almost down. Speaking? I can do it in writing, but I can't do it in speaking. Yes. Man, we're going to get you another hot toddy. Let's bring this out, girl. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. And with that, I think we can say goodnight. So to recap, we will be posting options for book club for next month, and we will vote on them in the Goodreads poll. Yeah. And, and I made up some rule about tweeting it tonight. So tweet. Yeah, there's some rule that Beth made up. Or just <laughs> rewind about ten minutes so you can read it because none of us remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us here at That's Our Most Busy Book Club, possibly our booziest book club yet. Yay! <laughs> Yay! We bid you adieu. Good night. Good night. Good night.